good afternoon to everyone. I'd like to present my PhD topic, uh, how to optimize the surgical treatment in ulcerative colitis. My name is Laura Todt. I'm a first year PhD student here at the Center for Translational Medicine. Uh, my supervisor is Paul Miheller. My SMS is on Atrans. My vision is to provide the best achievable therapy to IBD patients. For that, I have a mission that, uh, to contribute to the clarification of some questionable, uh, questionable parts in the surgical care of IBD patients. For that, I have two ongoing projects. The first project is about, uh, the, is about the connection of nutritional status and the, the postoperative uh, complications after ILAO, uh, ILAO, um, after uh, ILAO pouchanal anastomotic surgery. This is a systematic review and meta-analysis. The second is a comparison of the Hanson and stapled anastomosis uh, in uh, uh, IPA surgery too. Um, my uh, first topic is uh, that obesity is not significantly associated with postoperative complications in UC patients. Uh, my co-investigator was Sainal Sekai, my statisticians are Daniel Veres and Adam Zolczak. Why we choose this topic? The prevalence of ulcerative colitis is around 200 per 100 uh, people per year. About one-fifth of these patients will need to have colectomy. The majority of these, patient, of these operations are elective. In case of elective operations, if we know exactly the risk factors, we can do prehabilitation with that we can reduce the risk, uh, the risk of postoperative complications. On the other hand, approximately one in two adult UC patients are overweight or obese. The uh, effect of obesity on postoperative complications in UC patients are uncertain. So our aim is to investigate the effect of obesity on postoperative complications in UC patients. We ask the question whether obesity is associated with early and late postoperative complications in UC patients. For that, we use the PICO framework, where P was the, uh, the adult UC, population, uh, UC patients undergoing colectomy. E and C was the obese and non-obese uh, uh, UC patient group. Uh, we used the 30 BMI as a cutoff value according to the WHO. Uh, as the outcomes, we uh, used early and, and long-term postoperative complications. We hypothesized that the, uh, obesity increases the rate of early and late postoperative complications in UC patients undergoing surgery. In this figure, you can see uh, the recovery of patients who had uh, prehabilitation with the blue line, uh, who didn't have prehabilitation with the purple line, and uh, in case of the, gray, uh, of the green and the orange line, you can see what if the patient uh, had uh, postoperative complications. In our systematic search, uh, what was conducted in uh, last November, we used four domains. One reflects to the disease, one is in connection with the operation, uh, one was about the complications, and uh, one uh, focuses on the nutritional status. We identified more than 6,600 uh, uh, articles and abstracts. From that, we identified three full uh, text to the meta-analysis. Our first outcome was the length of hospital stay. We measured that in mean difference from means. We uh, included three retrospective cohort studies to our analyze. Uh, to our analyze. The first and the second was, one was, uh, ret uh, was uh, propensity score match studies. This is why the heterogeneity could be so low. Uh, and the overall mean difference was 0 0.36, uh, which is not, uh, not statistically significant. This practically means that obese patients spend more time in hospital with an average of uh, six hours. In the second forest plot, you can see uh, the complication rate in 30 days. Uh, the data was in even number, and we used odds ratio uh, to analyze this. Uh, we included the same three studies, and the overall odds ratio was, uh, zero, uh, was 1.08. Uh, this doesn't uh, reach the level of statistical significance, too. 
On the third uh, forest plot, you can see the most feared uh, complication type uh, of uh, this uh, um, operation, the septic complications in 30 days. Uh, we included the same studies and uh, the measure of effect was uh, odds ratio. The overall odds ratio was 1.11. This doesn't reach the level of statistical significance to in conclusion, we can say that there was no significant difference between the two investigated groups, although we can see a tendency uh, in the direction of the obese uh, patients. So our implication for practice is that obesity with this cutoff value is not a primary consideration in prehabilitation, although uh, more uh, investigation is needed about more types of complications with stratified BMI categories and uh, to focus on uh, long-term complications. Our study has strengths and limitations. Uh, this is the first comprehensive data on this topic from high-quality studies, valuable data sets, and we use rigorous methodology. Although the low number of the included studies of the, the retrospective cohort studies uh, and the lack of separate data on different complications and BMI categories uh, limits our study. Here you can see the manuscript status um, and we, will, uh, we would like to uh, finish it by the end of uh, June. About the second topic, uh, this is a comparison of the Hanson anastomosis with staple in UC patients undergoing colectomy. This is a systematic review and meta-analysis. My co-investigator is Hainal Seke. My project st student is Miklós Domonko Sárközi. Just some sentences about the background. The incidence of UC is between 9 and 20 per 100,000 people per year. About one-fifth of these patients will need to have colectomy again. Ilana pauchanel anastomosis is the gold standard surgery for UC, uh, for UC patients. Uh, this uh, operation has two big types, the Hanson and the stapled one. Uh, we can see a shift uh, from the Hanson to the stapled uh, from uh, 2000. Our aim is to compare the effect of different types of anastomosis on surgical outcomes in UC patients undergoing proctocolectomy. We asked the question whether Hanson anastomosis is associated with fewer long-term postoperative complications in UC patients. For that, we used the PICO framework, where the population would be the UC patients undergoing proctocolectomy with ilaapa channel anastomosis. We compared the Hanson and the stapled anastomosis, and as an outcome, we would like to focus uh, for the long-term postoperative complications, uh, but uh, if we have enough data, we would like to uh, analyze the early postoperative complications too. Our hypothesis is that Hanson anastomosis is associated with fewer long-term postoperative complications. Or a clinical implication would be that uh, with Hanson anastomosis, we can decrease the potential inflammation and malignant transformation of the pouch. Here you can see our preliminary search key. Uh, and with that, we, uh, we can find more than uh, 5,000 hits. We have three key articles. Uh, uh, on this, you can see the shift from the Hanson to the stapled anastomosis, and you can see that all of them uh, reported late complications. And uh, there was a meta-analysis in 2006 that focuses uh, just on the functional outcomes. Here you can see the summary of, our, uh, of my ongoing projects. And I'd like to thank you for your attention with a quote from Confucius, our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you, Laura, for your presentation. I have a question you. about your first project, about the BMI. I think we can agree this is a very broad uh, range, let's say more than 30 or 
lower than 30. I'm interested if these studies specify or include BMI more than 30, of course, but what about morbid obesity, more than 40? Are they also included? And also in the lower BMI, did they include lower than 18 underweight patients? Yes, one uh, excluded uh, patients uh, under uh, 18, and uh, we can see just the range of uh, the BMI um, then in if I remember well, they didn't include uh, patients uh, over uh, 40, but this was just because they didn't operate uh, patients with that uh, result, but they didn't exclude them. Okay, and my second question is for the second project. Is there any specific indications why some patients should, should receive uh, one type of anastomosis and other populations should receive the stable anastomosis. Uh, I uh, read uh, some articles about that. Uh, uh, for example, in obese patients, uh, the um, doctors uh, prefer, prefer the um, the stapled anastomosis because this is easier to perform. Um, this is, for example, a different, uh, difference between the two types, but uh, there is no specific uh, indication for one or another. So it's basically the surgeon's decision yes, which to, yes. to choose, and they usually prefer the easier option. And, and I think your study would... Uh, See, like, would um, provide data on what is clinically benefit for the patients. Yes, yes. The stapled one seemed um, quicker and easier, but uh, maybe this um, this have some side effects. This is why we conduct this analyze. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. By by virtue of the disease, so disease bowel can, you know, significantly hamper your nutrition. So are there enough uh, overtly obese or, or, or uh, morbidly obese patients among uh, the IBD patients? What is the, what, 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 what are the numbers telling? Uh, so, so basically one would think that with a diseased gut you will not be able to be overweight. Um, regarding uh, these uh, uh, articles and abstracts, um, we found that uh, that uh, as a problem, um, I found um, an abstract which uh, used categorized BMI values, and they found. Um, much more or less uh, morbid obese patients, uh, but uh, we can't uh, include uh, their studies be because they used overlapping patient population, uh, but there were some. And um, we see that uh, in ulcerative colitis patient population, uh, overweight and uh, the, uh, the obesity and the overweight uh, the rate of overweight patients are increasing, as in the average population. And just the final comment question. Um, so if you could go back to your title slide uh, of your first project. Okay, so obesity is not significantly associated with etc. Yes. Well, then associated or not? Because officially you are allowed to declare some association, of course, if you can confirm uh, by statistical analysis. Then you could not do that, of course. So um, I'm not sure that this is the best phrasing of your title. I That's see. one comment. The, the other one is, uh, do, you, do you actually um, have enough amount of data and uh, good quality articles to declare 
this, this uh, that actually obesity is not associated with uh, postoperative complications? I think the amount of the data um, is quite good because we included more than uh, 5,000 uh, patients in this analysis, but uh, there are some uh, some questionable parts because uh, of the of. Uh, for example, we pull the uh, overweight patients with the normal nutritional uh, status, status patients together, and uh, we don't have enough data to categorize uh, them separately. So, analyze them separately. So, this is why uh, we think that more investigation is needed for that. And just a final question, maybe I just did not understand well. So the, uh, the extremely obese patients were included in the analysis, but most probably uh, they did not undergo uh, these operations. So I'm, uh, is it all right? Did I understand well? In the so they, they were included in this analysis? I mean, for example, uh, when your outcome was some kind of complication, but basically uh, they did not have uh, a, um, a surgery uh, like uh, uh, in the other cases. Um, they didn't uh, exclude them. Hip uh, hypothetically, they uh, would include, but they didn't operate it, uh, these patients. But if there was no operation, then how can we actually measure the postoperative complications? Uh, the higher BMI value was, I think, uh, 38. So we could uh, uh, hypothetically. Uh, um, pull them separately, for example, from the overweight patients and from the uh, one type of obesity, which is between 30 and 35, and in, the, in another category, the obesity two, which is between, according to the WHO, uh, between 35 and 40. So maybe I think it would be worth to analyze them separately, but we don't have the opportunity. Yeah, just, you know, it's, it's a huge limitation. Yes. I mean, if they were not excluded from the analysis. Okay, thank you. Thank you.